Yeah. All right, so we're back live again. Let's give people a couple of minutes to catch up. Uh, Jonathan, you want to play some music for us just to invite people back in? So I think most of us are back on Facebook, bouncing back and forth between the two. Um, all right, looks like people want to refresh their page. All right, I think we're back on the... So I think what that means, according to the diocesan rules, we're supposed to wrap up worship in 45 minutes. So because we stopped worship and had to restart, I think that gives us another 45 minutes now. So um, I think the sermon time just got a little bit longer. Uh, let me get us back into our, uh, our sermon gallery here again. Um, there was an awful lot of shaking heads, please know from the clergy, I'll let you know, folks. So don't worry, we're not going another 45 minutes. All right, we were on to page three. Where is the grace in the text? Hopefully we got all of page two in there before uh, the gremlins got us, but uh, for right now, let's move into the grace. So Robert, uh, I'm not sure, it's been a while now since we talked about the text. Hopefully you remember what your <laughs> sermon was gonna be. Where are you finding the grace in the text this morning? Um, I, I think uh, I have to see good news and grace um, in uh, 
in the the idea that um, somebody knows Nathaniel without Nathaniel having to do any work. <laughs> um, that that it is just it just is, um, and um, presumably I don't know even we don't get anything of Nathaniel's story in in scripture or um, other than he's from Nazareth um, or, or sorry he's from where is he? We don't know. Uh, Bethsaida maybe or you know, he's oh. from somewhere. He, um, but we don't get much of his story. We don't know that he's a fisherman. We don't know that he's a, uh, you know, a farmer or whatever, uh, or a tax collector or any of the other snippets of story we get about other people. But God in Jesus knows everything about Nathaniel down to, you know, where he was sitting and what he was, uh, what the content of his character is. Um, and there's grace in that knowing. Uh, Lisa wants to jump in. All right, go ahead, Lisa. Yes, and along with that, for me, it's that Jesus is recognized for who he is right away. You know, first by Philip and then by Nathaniel. And even though Nathaniel was hesitant at first, um, Jesus kept offering and welcoming him, welcoming him. Come and see. I mean, that's the kind of invitation that most people get you know, kind of, um, they want to know what's going on with. Um, and, and Jesus was from that, like, right from that point on was drawing people to himself. They were meeting him and they were changed and they didn't always know what it was about him. But there was something that this invitation was, was, um, was drawing people to him. For sure. Absolutely. Charlotte, you want to jump in next? Yeah, um, I want to sort of pick up on that come and see thing. Um, what I where where I find grace here is in a couple of different places or in a couple of different ways, I guess, in that same statement. So come and see. So um, Nathaniel sort of after Philip um, and sort of berating him a little bit, right? What what good can what do you know? What what good can come out of there? And Philip doesn't have to justify what he's saying. He doesn't have to. Um, be combative he doesn't have to be uh, he doesn't have to push back he all he has to say is well come and see for yourself so the idea that um philip is being gracious without succumbing to that um i'm going to judge you back um is grace um but again the idea of just come that, that's all i'm saying is believe me or not don't care but come and see and judge for yourself so i find grace um in the text for Philip to not have to justify anything, to not have to defend anything, to not have to sort of um, jump into, well, what do you know? Um, sort of shooting back and just say, well, come and see. If you want to find out, come and see. Um, and offering that invitation. So that's that's where I'm finding grace in, in our text this morning. Absolutely. I think I, I want to pick up a little bit on that as well, that idea of come and see. The other piece too is, um, the grace is Philip was so convinced who Jesus was. He, he so knew who Jesus was. He wanted others to come and see. Um, and it didn't matter that he didn't know all the little nitty bitty grits and nitty gritty bits and pieces of who Nathaniel was. He knew that Nathaniel was someone that he needed to introduce to Jesus. Um, and then when he got there, Jesus already knew him. Right. It, it was I've known you since, you know, I, I've known you since your parts were put together in your mother's womb, right? Like that, that idea of always being known, always being um, welcome, always you know, come and see me, whether you're ready to when you're 12, whether you're ready to when you're 20, whether you're ready to when you're 50, come and see me. I know who you are and I'm ready to welcome you, right? I knew you and you were sitting under the fig tree long before somebody introduced you to me, right? And I think there's so much grace in that. There's so much, uh, so much of a, a promise of it doesn't matter when, as long as you come, right? And I think there's just there's just a grace in that. Even before I knew Jesus, Jesus knew me, is what Nathaniel is is experiencing here. All right. So where is where is page four then? Where is the grace in the world? Robert, you want to start us off on that one? Um, I think it has to be for me, anyways. The 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 grace and good news I'm hearing is that despite all of the ways that we 
we humans judge each other. Um, and there's, there's lots of ways that we are externally, you know, judged from the outside um, for things that we have no control over. Um, again, back to, you know, the size of our nose and the color of our skin and the, you know, the outward appearance of our, our life. Um, there isn't any guarantee that that's not going to still happen. <laughs> um, there's still going to be the, can anything good come from Arn Pryor Puce or, um, uh, <laughs> or, um, <laughs> or Nazareth. Um, that's still, we're still human beings. That, that stuff is still going to happen uh, between people, but that God knows us is where I have to find find the good news is that whatever somebody may think of, and I'll just speak for mine, whatever anybody may think of me, looking at me from the outside, um, uh, all right, <laughs> have at it, I guess. Um, but that um, that God knows the content of my character and all of the, you know, the shady corners of my of my existence as well as the the light and the bright of my existence um, uh, without my having to put effort into explaining it to somebody that's that's grace and good news to me it certainly is absolutely thanks robert who wants to go next charlotte elise who's going next charlotte is all right yeah i'll go um so where i'm finding grace um in the world is in the opportunity offered to us um, as a Christian community to not have to defend God. Um, we don't have to um, push back when other, um, other faith groups want to um, diminish what we believe. Um, come and see, right? Believe me or not, this is, this is where I'm finding salvation and uh, come and see. And, and that's all, all I have to offer. Um, and not, not all I have to offer, but all I have to offer, um, right? I don't have to change your mind. I don't have to make you believe what I believe. I don't have to do anything other than say, come and see for yourself. Um, and so should I be one that comes from the armpit of wherever, um, be that puce or not arm prior, um, it's okay. Cause I'm going to invite you to come and see anyway. And, and, um, you're, you're welcome to come and see for yourself and experience God for yourself and experience that knowing that, that Robert was talking about, right? Somebody that, that knows everything and still says, come on to the table, um, mm -hmm that for me is, is grace. So, um, the ability to not have to fight back is, is beautiful for me. Um, and that's, that's where I'm, um, sitting in grace today. Wonderful. Thanks, Rob. I feel like I'm running a game show here. Whoever hits the buzzer first gets to speak next. It's kind of a fun, kind of a fun game. All right, Elise, just before I wrap things up, you're up. Go for it. Yeah. Um, I agree with, um, Robert and Sharla. Um, grace abounds in this and and the other part of it is what is going on in our world today is allowing us to take the opportunity to learn to do things maybe slightly different to learn the art of invitation to to say come and see like not you know, there's been so many times over the years where we, you know, where they do these back to church Sundays and all this kind of stuff. And it can get really, the message can get really convoluted. Okay. I mean, all of that, but simply come and see to be able to share our own excitement with our relationship with God, with those around us who may not know anything about it. Um, but to not be hammering it at people, but just come and see, you know, um, so it's, it's, it's that we have the opportunity here um, to expand on this art of invitation. Absolutely. Thanks, Elise. Uh, just before I get into the, to the wrap up here, just um, Irene Moore Davis posted on Facebook that she's making contributions to the Puce and Arnprior Anti-Defamation Leagues effective immediately. So 
Uh, just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Um, so the other piece, and, and there's definitely that invitation piece, right? That invited, that inviting people in and so on. Uh, the other piece I want to talk about, so Robert, you spoke of this weeks ago. Um, you spoke of, it's not our job to judge, right? Um, it's not our role to decide who's right, who's wrong, who should be brought before God, who shouldn't be brought before God. Um, it's just our job to bring everyone and let God sort them out, right? And I think this is a passage that really speaks to that is whether you are going to question God, you know, what good can come from, from Nazareth, whether you're wide open to the idea of God, you know, you are the God, the Son, the, the Messiah, um, whether you just need to come to God to have your eyes open, to be able to see um, the brilliance of, of the kingdom, whatever it is, it's not my job to decide why it is that you need to come to God. It's just my job to try to get you there. Um, and then once you're there, you and God can have that conversation. That has, you notice in the, in the passage, Philip stops talking. Once Nathaniel and Jesus connect, Philip just steps out of the way and says, okay, God, you got this. I'm going to go find someone else. Right. And, and that's our job. Our job is to get that relationship started and then uh, to be able to step away and say, okay, I'll back you up if you need some help, but this is between you and God now. This isn't about me. Uh, this is about you and, and the one who has called you here. Um, so I think there's just some real grace to be found in that. Uh, so with that in mind, let's pray. Heavenly God, you call all of us in different ways. You call all of us to uh, invite friends, family, stranger, enemy, whoever it happens to be, to come to you. Remind us of that call. Remind us that we are called, like Philip, to just bring people to come and see. Help us to open our eyes to the reality that it's not our job to determine who comes and who doesn't, but it is our job to make sure that whether they are from a questionable locale or whether they're from one of the greatest kingdoms in the world, all are welcome to the kingdom of all. We offer time, we offer this time, and we offer our thoughts in this name. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for all the earth, the church, and all those in need, saying, God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world, for leaders of nations, that wisdom and integrity will prevail for the good of all people, especially the poor, for regions torn by conflict, that peace may reign and living become an enterprise of construction rather than destruction. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all people of faith, for the unity of the body of Christ, that divisions might not turn people away from the church, for Hindus, Muslims, Buddhists, and Jews, that wherever prayers are raised up, the one God of all will hear. For all people who nurture life in the name of a greater good, God of grace, our prayer. Let us pray for our own nation and for our friends and neighbors in the nation. For the President, Congress, for the Supreme Court and all judges, state governments, city councils, school boards, and all who have the, policy, the power to make policy. 
that all considerations be given to what is most healthy for people and creatures. We pray especially this week as our neighbors and friends in the United States prepare themselves for the celebration of a new president in their country. May the transition be peaceful, may love prevail, may peace preside. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in need, for all who are hungry in the world, for all who have no home and no employment, for those who are either unjustly or justly imprisoned, for parents and children who live in fear for any reason, for all who are in mourning. God of grace, hear our prayer. I would invite you to offer either in the chat online as we offer our Facebook prayers this morning, or in the silence of your own heart sitting in your living rooms and kitchens, that we offer concerns for this gathering of people who are here online, as well as all of those who we are separated from at this time. I invite your prayers, either silently or aloud. Thanksgiving, we remember all who have shaped us in your ways, O God. Receive our prayers and grant whatever you see that your people need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus promised that you and I will come to see heaven opened and angels dancing in splendor. Our offerings are a thanksgiving for these gifts. Open now your hearts and share your possessions so that the church's work in, may be made strong for the sake of this needy world. Our offertory hymn this morning is in your hymn book number 430 or in your song sheet. Take my life and let it be.
living God, you have revealed your son as the Messiah. May we, may we hear his word and follow it and live as children of light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy come be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ, crucified and risen for all, go with you this day and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Well, just a couple of really uh, quick announcements for us as we wrap up our worship here this morning. Uh, first of all, the online registration form has come out for anyone who is uh, wanting to take part in our online Lenten study series. Uh, so there is a book called He Turned His Faith to Jerusalem. Uh, it's a seven-week study. It engages us with the scripture of the journey of Christ to Jerusalem. So it starts with uh, that moment when Jesus' teaching shifted from uh, the gifts of ministry of, of healing and of miracles and instead shifted to the idea of the end of, of, end of his days, the end of his journey. Um, and he starts making his way to Jerusalem and uh, takes us right through to the last words shared on the cross by Christ. So uh, it takes us on quite a journey. Um, it's going to be led in, as I said, seven different sessions. Um, and we look forward to sharing that with folks as we make our way through. If you're interested in taking part in that, uh, please make sure that you register online. There is a link that your rectors have probably emailed to you, um, as well as uh, that link will be online uh, on our on different Facebook pages and such, an opportunity for you to be able to register for that, as well as ordering a book. Now, if you're wanting to order a book, we need to know that information fairly soon, by the middle of next week, actually, uh, the 26th of, Jan of January. So uh, if you can please make sure that you register in advance and let us know if you're wanting a book so we can get a copy of it uh, ordered in for you. All right. Um, otherwise, uh, not a whole lot going on uh, this week. It's again uh, January. We're still putting stuff together as we make our way in these darker and, and grayer days. Uh, there is a hymn sing coming. I can't give you a deadline for that yet, uh, but it will be it will be coming shortly. Um, the only other item that I do want to share is that the vestry for the Anglican Church of Canada, as you are aware, um, we in our, each of our churches we need to have our annual general meeting, the meeting of vestry, uh, which is a gathering usually in January or February in the Diocese of Huron. Um, those vestry announcements are in your bulletin. Uh, at this point, January 31st for Christ Church in Colchester, February 7th for All Saints in downtown Windsor, St. James in Roseland here in Windsor, and for St. Andrews in Harrow. Uh, St. Augustine, your date is to be announced. Your wardens and I will be having that conversation in the next 48 hours or so uh, to make that decision as to what our date is going to be. Uh, so keep an eye, an eye open for online vestry reports and that kind of thing, which will be sent out uh, to all of the different congregations. Uh, but this is your first notice, first official uh, invoice notice of dates for vestry. Uh, the only other item that I do want to wrap up with is uh, there is a group of folks who have started to gather for uh, some, physical ex some physical exercise, an opportunity to go for a walk. Um, Gordon Haggart and Art Roth from, uh, from All Saints and Gordon from here at St. Augustine um, have started this uh, process of inviting people to join them for a walk. Uh, please be careful. Please uh, make sure you're maintaining your social distance, not gathering in groups more than five. 
Um, this is a, we are in a lockdown right now, folks. We are in a, a time of the government telling us to stay home unless it's absolutely necessary that you be out. However, they have also indicated that physical fitness is a good idea. Um, so if you're going to join them for the walk today, it's at 12.30. There's notes in the, um, in the emails that went out to the communities. Um, if you're not sure what's happening, uh, either connect with uh, Reverend Robert or myself, because I know we both have the information because Gordon and Art are members of our congregations, and we'll get you in touch with the person you need to get in touch with um, for today's walk. But if that's it, uh, just a thumbs up from Rectors. We got everything covered. I got two, three thumbs up. All right, excellent. Let's wrap up our worship this morning then with our closing hymn, number 387 in your blue hymn book uh, or on your, on your song sheet, All Praise to Thee. are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. Listen to the word of the Lord as you move through your day. Trust that that Holy Spirit will guide your choices. See each person you meet for whom Jesus gave his life. And the Thanks. blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.